one of the spiritual practices that I've had during this year and a half of pandemic is a poem. And I love that our Unitarian Universalist uh, denomination holds diverse sources for our tradition, that we call ourselves a living tradition of diverse wisdom and spirituality. The UUA says we draw from sources as diverse as science, poetry, scripture, and personal experience. And so poetry and personal experience have been big sacred texts for me lately, and I include music, which leads to dance, which we're talking about today, in all of that. But a poem that has been a sacred text and a touchstone for me during this time is Go to the Limits of Your Longing by Rainer Maria Rilke. And the piece that's on my heart tonight, Rilke imagines the voice of the divine, the, devoice, the voice of God saying this, you sent out beyond your recall, go to the limits of your longing, embody me, flare up like a flame and make big shadows I can move in. Embody me, God says, make big shadows I can move in as you flare up like a flame. There's our chalice, there's our anthem, the world's on fire and we still fall in love. And there's a piece of deep comfort in there for me, imagining that in our embodiment, in the flames of the world where we cast these shadows, that that's where God is most present with us the divine, the sacred, whatever you call your source and ground of being in darkness, in struggles, in challenges, that's where the divine is. And what I love about that even more is that that's a positive image of darkness. I love that. It's dark here where I am in my, in my study slash dance room. And we too often have negative language about darkness, which impacts the way we are with each other. And so to have these, these positive images of darkness that when we flare up like a flame, when we have a world on fire, as hard as that may be, there we cast the shadows and there is the divine with us. And I love that so much. So I want to offer that peace. Go to the limits of your longing. I have felt at the limits of my longing, missing that community that you saw in that video. I will also tell you that I didn't wash that paint that you saw the kids putting on my window. I didn't wash that off for months. I let it bake on there in the Texas sun. It was a reminder for me, a piece of impromptu art that I, I use to hold my community close. I wonder what you've been doing to hold beauty and joy and community close to you. We're gonna get a chance to share all of us a little bit later. But I ask you to be thinking about that. You know, if that video were the last party you threw before some big change, before the world caught on fire, who would be there? And what would be the joy practices in your living room? Would there be dancing? Would there be bubbles? Would there be pancakes and finger paint? What would be happening in that document for you? So when I did finally, finally, work up sort of the spirit and the courage to wash off that paint. I had my mom come over and we did it together. And the light that came in was amazing. I could see my yard again. I could see the world again. And so sometimes I think we cling to things that we need, but then maybe there comes a point where they don't serve us. And can we let them go? The Indian author and activist Arundhati Roy has written a piece describing this pandemic as a portal that we may go through lightly with little luggage if we so choose and, and choose what we're going to bring through the portal into what's next, into the beloved community and the world that we are creating together. So tonight I also want to ask you to think about what are you going to be bringing forth into the time to come and what could you be leaving behind to be lighter? in your luggage. A piece of scripture for you that gives us the title of our service today, Dance in the Desert, Bring a Tambourine. It comes from the book of Exodus, and I'm going to read from the Poverty and Justice Bible. 
I will tell you that I grew up Unitarian Universalist with very little Bible in my congregation and not a lot of comfort with it. And I wanted to be someone who really could connect with people across all different faiths. And I also wanted to be in touch with some of the religion of my ancestry, which is Christianity. And so when I heard that the Reverend Dr. William Barber, one of our great racial justice um, advocates in this country, used this version of the Bible, I thought to myself, that's what I'm getting. And I'll tell you, I love to highlight books, but this one already comes with highlighting on it. It's it's high lit, highlighted, I'm not sure, with parts that relate to poverty and justice. And I know that this group at the CLF um, cares deeply about those things. So I commend this version of the Bible to you if you're looking for something like that. But what I'm gonna read to you is a piece from Exodus. Feminist scholar Carol Myers has described Exodus as the most important book of the Bible. And you're probably familiar with the story of the Israelites' long, hard journey from slavery to the Promised Land. And there, are, I wanna acknowledge that there are many ways that we might relate to this story based on our own experiences, our family, our heritage. And so knowing that, I just invite you to connect with the story from what is the true place for you. This piece is from the Song of Miriam, chapter 16, verses 19 through 21. After the Israelites had walked safely through on dry ground, Miriam, the sister of Aaron, was a prophet. So she took her tambourine and led the other women out to play their tambourines and to dance. Then she sang to them. I will tell you, as someone who didn't quite feel like she fit in in seminary, as kind of a punk rocker and a Zumba teacher and all of that, it was a gift to my soul to get this piece about a female prophet who brought music and dance along the way with her. And as a former journalist, what I love, I love to look at the words. In this translation, we have the word so. Two letters that mean so much here. We have Miriam was a prophet, so she took her tambourine and led the other women out to sing and dance. Not Miriam was a prophet and they tolerated her tambourine. Not Miriam was a prophet and by the way, she had a tambourine. Miriam was a prophet, so she took her tambourine. And friends, she didn't just take her tambourine out to perform. She took her tambourine out and she invited the other women out to sing and to dance. She didn't invite the most powerful men on the journey. She invited the women out to sing and to dance. And I want to invite you to ask yourself, what is your instrument that is both joyful and a place for invitation and inclusion? Your instrument might be literally music to invite other people in, or it might be something very different. The tambourine might be a metaphor for you. But it's so powerful to me that she brought a tambourine on this very difficult journey and she made an invitation of it. And I believe very deeply that that is what our faith communities need to do, that we need to bring instruments of joy, whatever that may be, joy practices as much as possible and then invite others because we know that these communities are so nourishing and so needed. And there are so many more people out there who don't know. So I want you to keep inviting people and keep telling people about the CLF. Now, one of my colleagues, Mandy McGlynn, a Jewish um, uh, spiritual director, wrote a beautiful poem inspired by Miriam, inspired by this um, piece of Exodus. And what she brought up that, that just delighted me even more and spoke to my spirit even more is that imagine, imagine the care it must have taken in the dark of night to pack tambourines, by definition, very noisy instruments to pack tambourines to sneak away in the night for your safety for this unknown journey out of slavery. Many of us are on unknown journeys out or beyond or through or continuing in hard things right now in different ways. Some of us may be talking about it publicly. Some of us may not have told a soul yet. But my prayer is that like Miriam, 
you will be finding a way to bring music, dance, or whatever your joy practice is with you. Not only, as Mandy McGlynn says, did they take a risk in packing an instrument like a tambourine, they left, they left space out that could have gone to food to make room for that. The faith, the faith that they would be provided for in this story, so much so that they saved room for joy, for music, for dance. I believe that can be a gift, an inspiration for us during what is an unknown time and life, whether we're in a pandemic or not, is always full of unknown challenges. And so I hope that you're gonna be bringing an instrument of joy with you and inviting those who need it too. I believe this is our work. This is our faith as Unitarian Universalists. This is how we honor our own inherent worth and dignity with joy.